Hi, I'm Wendy from H2O Bungalow. Today I'm going to share with you how to build a three-panel room divider that's easy to move, provides lots of privacy, and still lets the light shine through. You can download my instructions and supply list at h2obungalow.com, search room divider, and you'll find a link to my post in this video description too. And sending out a big thank you to HomeRate's Super Finish Max for sponsoring this project. For this project, you'll need nine one inch by three inch boards at eight feet, six clear light panels, six three and a half inch hinges, brown paint, and a Super Finish Max paint sprayer. For the cut list, six of the one by three inch boards will be at 94 and one eighth inch, 36 will be at 22 and one quarter inch. Frames for the panels require straight cuts. Trim a small section off one end of each piece of the six styles before measuring to cut the length. Next, you'll turn the board over, measure your length, and cut from the other end so both ends will have square and fresh cuts. Plan your cuts around knots in the wood, especially where two pieces of wood will join. This is especially important for the 36 rails. My local store was out of select lumber and I had to use a lower quality common board. That meant sanding and working around blemishes. I sorted my wood so the blemished pieces would be used where they wouldn't show, marked them, and then sorted them. Set the Craig jig to 3 quarters inch and add pocket holes to the rails, top and bottom pieces of the frames. Center the board in the jig and use the A and C hole positions. Flip the board over and add another set of holes on the same side. You'll do this for all of the 22 and a quarter inch pieces. Starting with the outside of the first panel, place two long styles and two short rail pieces on a flat surface. My workshop is really small, so the best place for me was on the floor in my house. You'll place the top and bottom rail so the pocket holes face outward. Attach these with one and a quarter inch pocket screws. Once one side is done, flip the frame over and connect the other style. Next, you'll lay the frame flat and mark the location for the rails. Mark 23 inches from each end and the center, which is 46 inches. You'll also mark the midway point across the end of each of the rail on the same side as the pocket holes. I wanted the rails and clear panels centered in my frame. To do this, I cut three 3 8 inch thick shims out of a scrap one by three and place them under the rails as I attach them. I attached them starting at the center rail, lining up the mark on the frame with the center mark on the rail. I used one and a quarter inch pocket screws to attach them. Continue adding the rest of the rails on that side, noting that the two end rails will butt up against the frame. Don't forget to move the shims under each rail as you attach them. Next, you'll sand the frame and add micro bevels on any sharp edge. I used my random orbital sander and 120 grit sandpaper to smooth out any rough surfaces. Be sure to get all of the flat surfaces inside and outside of the frame. Add a micro bevel by running the sander over the sharp corners to dull them slightly. To save time and get a beautiful smooth finish, I used my HomeRite Super Finish Max paint sprayer with the green paint tip for this project. You'll also need safety goggles, a respirator, brown latex paint, and if you'd like, gloves. Tie your extension cord and the Super Finish Max plug together like this to prevent it from coming loose as you move. I also have a few extra Finish Max containers of filled water and a piece of cardboard to test the paint flow and spray pattern and make adjustments before I start painting. To get a good finish, you'll need to elevate the frames and rails on 2x4s. Place a drop cloth under to catch the excess paint. 
To paint the rails, apply the paint in steady back and forth motions on an angle from one side. Then move to the other end and do another pass from that side. Paint the frame the same way, applying paint at an angle from one side and then to the other holding the finish max about 12 to 15 inches from the frame. A handy tip, between coats of paint, swap the Finish Max container holding the paint for one with clear water. Run the paint sprayer until it runs clear. Then swap the containers back when you're ready to paint again. When the first side is dry, flip the frames over and paint the other sides. Now you're ready to assemble the panels. Lay a panel frame front side down on a flat surface. Carefully place one clear plastic panel in place starting at the end. These panels crack when bent too far, so lay it in place very carefully. Now you'll add the first two rails in the same position as the front, attaching them with one and a quarter inch pocket screws. You'll work from the end inward. You can measure your rail locations if you'd like. I just eyeballed it and they looked fine. Now you'll do the same for the other side. I didn't use wood glue in case I decided to change the panels out at a later time. I wasn't sure I liked how thin these panels were. I did use a small amount of double-sided sticky tape to hold the two ends in position though. Continue attaching the rails working from the outside inward, attaching the middle one last. Assemble the other two panels exactly as you did the first. Now you're ready to add the hinges. You'll use three three and a half inch hinges on each side. Begin by laying the first two panels with the front facing each other. You'll adjust the ends so all the edges are flush. Next, you'll measure and mark where the hinges will go. Mine are 12 inches from each end and at the center, which is 46 inches. To attach my hinges, I used a bit of hot glue to hold them in place. Then I drilled pilot holes and screwed them in place. Your first set of panels will open like this with the front sides facing inward of the two connected panels. Lay the last panel on top, front side up this time, lining the edges and the ends. You'll add three hinges to the other side of from where the first hinges are connecting the top two panels. One thing I'd like to point out, if I were to do this project again, I would choose thicker acrylic panels. Although the benefit of these is they fit perfectly in the frame for an 8-foot ceiling. Again, you can download the complete set of instructions and supply list from my blog post at h2obungalow.com, search Room Divider. If you liked my project, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. While you're on my blog, don't forget to subscribe to that too.